Is there yeah. any uh, agenda mm. that you want to prosecute, that you want to crusade for through your work? It's a very sensitive question. Yeah, yeah. But I've found that some actors and, and producers are quite open about the fact that they want their work to forward a certain cause. And of course, indigenous culture is a huge issue in this country. Mark, are you wanting to use your your art to forward particular viewpoints, particular causes to do with indigenous culture? Um, thanks for the question. It's it's um, it's certainly a, a meaty one. Um, look, it's not. I, I you know when you're born indigenous, you're born into a political circumstance. Um, I don't define myself just by my indigenous heritage, but I'm also I also acknowledge like that there isn't a great deal of leadership there isn't enough indigenous leadership across our country, especially for young people. And as uncomfortable as I may be about potentially heading in that direction um, in the coming years, it's it's like, you know, the um, the from the example of my mother and from other strong people I've met, I, I don't really have an excuse not to. Um, but you know, I don't just I don't want to just wave a flag for Indigenous Australia. I, I want to wave you know a flag for kind of what it means to be a human being. So I try to start from love first. It might feel a bit esoteric, but everything else comes from there. A any of the fear and the anger and anything that's broken. I like to start from the point of love first. Um, and there's themes that like, you know, cause I'm, I'm a dreamer and I'm very sentimental. I've always been that my whole life. So it's kind of very fortuitous um, that I've been able to get involved in acting because it's sort of like the perfect thing society could like usher me into the corner and get me out of the way of the rest of the world. Yeah, let's put him over there with his, you know, his personality disorder, and, and he can do that. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, I just... That, this is why porno is such a special film to me, because, like, it's sort of like a, a quiet and subtle celebration of, you know, um, these intersecting lives and, and community and, and uh, what it means to sort of interact with each other, you know? I, yeah, I, I don't know. I... I I just know that I'm very sentimental and that I know what it feels like to be lonely and um, to have regrets and to have hopes and I love being given the opportunity to try and remind people of things that might be valuable in their lives through, through acting. Have you become increasingly aware of the power pop culture has to change people's minds, to forward ideas to alter uh, preconceptions and prejudices people might have yeah definitely i think um i think it's a source of hope especially with you know um i think for me the only form of democracy at the moment is the internet and i think you know with media and with content and with content creators that are working from a grassroots level like damien and um and paul uh you know, these uh, these are always the kinds of creators that have something to say that isn't Batman versus Superman or, you know, the Avengers or anything like that. That isn't this kind of faraway fantasy. It's really down to earth and it's really, um, I don't know, honest, I guess. Are you aware, Mark Coles Smith? Well, I'm maybe not. You, are you aware that you have arrived on the scene at almost exactly the right time in terms of being an indigenous actor, about 20, 25 years ago, mm. you literally could not get people to go see a movie that had indigenous actors or indigenous themes in them. Forget about it. There were some great movies made in the 80s, yeah. shortchanged, fringe dwellers, um, even the 90s, mm. uh, Blackfellas, mm. Dead Heart, Crossroads, great movies. Yeah, yeah. In, you couldn't get people to go see them unless you had news items on television pleading for people to go see them. 
that's changed. Absolutely, absolutely. Brand new day, yeah, yeah. sapphires, Redfern now. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All the TV stuff, and of course, Last Capture Darwin is absolutely an example of that. I know you're a young man, but what do you think has changed in the public's perception of Indigenous people that has reversed the situation from box office poison to box office attraction? Um, I'd, I'd like to hope and think that it's it's to do with like you know some kind of just um well i don't want to use well i'll use the word like term cultural awakening i guess but it's just it's just natural progression australia has always been really in progressive it's been really behind it's really parochial it's you know our our social justice and all of that stuff is so behind and it just was a matter of time for normal people who are honest to kind of slowly wake up to, you know, the propaganda of our country um, and our country's history to actually start, you know, being open to the idea of incorporating Indigenous Australia back into, like, you know, mainstream osmosis and mm -hmm. into, you know, the are you, uh, But are you aware of that, that change that has taken place? Look, I'm, see, I'm, see, look I'm seeing it happen. I feel like, I'm, I, and I'm holding on to the hope that it's, it's, it is going to be the direction our country goes in. I really do hope that. But not all our audiences are on point that way. And, you know, not, I don't believe that every audience member that, you know, goes to see a movie I'm in, you know, goes to it for those reasons. Um, I, I know that the kinds of Indigenous content that is really successful is always a celebration. It's, you know, you've got the sapphires, you know, you've got Brand New Day, you've got these... Is sort of really uplifting, you know, musicals and things like that, you know. But with Redfern now and some of these other sort of darker sort of shows that are a bit gritty and deal with you know, social justice, you the circuit, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not quite sure that we have a predominant Australian audience yet for that stuff, really. I mean, the circuit's a great example of something that got an amazing critical response, but it didn't really get its audience, you know. And I think that was on the cusp of this this sort of this chapter, uh, hopefully, in Australian content that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I met somebody, I was at dinner with someone like uh, two years ago here in Melbourne, she was with her friends, and Redfern now had just picked up uh, one of its first awards for season one, and um, the topic of the show came up, and this girl was like, oh, I can't watch that show. It's, um, it's too... I don't know, I just, when I get home after work, I just, you know, I want, I want something light, rah, rah, rah. and it's kind of like, it's, that's fair enough, you're allowed to watch what you want to watch, you know, you, no one's allowed to presume your attention, but at the same time, I was just like, oh, I just, I wish you were one of those people that had the courage to just, like, sit down and let this subject matter come to you, and not turn away from it, because that's been happening for a long time. But anyway, all, all in good time, one would hope. David Coppola. Oh. What does he mean to you? I'm not sure why you brought him up, but he is. I brought him up because favorite. David Coppola is my favorite Australian actor. Uh, but look, look, everyone, everyone. know that. Um, yeah, uh, David Coppola is my favorite Australian actor. I think there's no one else like him. I know that he he sits in a niche in our industry, but. There's, there's, yeah, there's no one else like him, and the work, the, his body of work, um, and where he comes from, and what he's able to show, uh, is is so valuable, um, at least to me. When it, you know, he's 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 a huge inspiration to me. I'll, you know, for the very first time ever, I'll be on set with him this week on Thursday. So it's uh, very synchronistic. You would mention him. I think he's an incredible actor. There's, I think the tracker is probably one of is one of my favourite Australian films. Um, Uncle Archie did an amazing soundtrack on that. But Charlie's Country too. There's a there's a scene in Charlie's Country when um, there's an old fellow who's leaving the community. He's being put on the plane to be flown to Darwin. Um, for medical uh, reasons, uh, medical complications, and and David watches him be put on the plane and flown away. And as the plane takes off and enters the air, this single tear rolls down David's cheek because he knows that old man is going away and won't be coming back. 
and um, just little moments like that are lost on me when I watch his work. It's, he's, yeah, he's, he's in a class mm. all unto himself. And that was an incredibly honest film too. Oh yeah. Charlie's Country, the acknowledgement of what he'd been through and basically kind of showing the full picture. Definitely.